Hey, it's Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark, at various places on the internet. It just turned 5.33 p.m., according to the computer clock, on Saturday, March 24, 2012. And today I want to share with you my memories of time tracks. Now, uh, for those of you that uh, might not remember this show or maybe just never heard of it. Uh, Time Tracks was a first run syndication um, sci fi series that started in uh, 1993 in, in January, I believe. Uh, it ran for two seasons before it was cancelled. It dealt with a police officer from the future from the year 2193 named Darian Lambert, uh, who was played by Dale Midkiff, who you might know as uh, the dad from Pet Cemetery. Okay, um, so he's a police officer from the 22nd century, and there's a criminal mastermind, uh, Dr. Mordecai Zombie, played by uh, Peter Donat, who you might uh, remember as uh, Mulder's father from the X-Files. Um, basically, uh, time travel has been discovered. Well, they, they knew about it since like 11 years earlier at least. Um, anyway, Dr. Zombie is uh, breaking criminals out of uh, jail and sending them back in time. Um, and he goes back in time himself also to be a king among primitives, as he um, describes. Um, the way that this works is they have a, uh, a teleportation process that can teleport people out of jail and also teleport them back in time uh, using a, a, um, a device. Um, it's like a chamber or something. Anyway, um, the thing is, they need the body won't survive the process unless um, it's exposed to a chemical, like ingested or inhaled, called um, TXP. Uh, and without it, any person that goes into machine uh, will die like within minutes, basically. Um, and also they won't be teleported anywhere. Now, TXP, uh, supposedly the bo human body can take only two doses safely, and a third dose is supposedly fatal. Um, I remember Dr. Zombie broke this one guy out of a uh, prison named Sepp Dietrich using TXP, and with his second dose, he was sent back in time to 1993. Um, Later on, it was found that a third dose is survivable, but instead of sending the person back to uh, 2193, uh, Sep basically just got um, teleported somewhere else on Earth, and also his body became aged and uh, ragged. And anyway, so anyway, so uh, after losing this. Uh, woman um, named Alyssa, I believe, that uh, Dr. Zombie killed by taking her into the machine without her being, uh, without her having TXP in her body. So basically, she tells Darian to stop them. So Darian decides to volunteer to go back in time and um, hunt down all these fugitives one by one and send them back to a present. And the way that he does this is he has to shoot them with a dose of TXP. He's got, he's got a device that's shaped like a, that's disguised as a call, to look like a car alarm basically. It's, it could shoot out three different things. Uh, two different pellets put, um, people to sleep for either two minutes or three hours and the third one's TXP. 
So he has to shoot them with TXP, and then he has his holographic computer, which is uh, shaped and designed to look like a credit card. Um, named Selma, he basically has her activate some kind of tone that um, it sends the uh, affected person forward uh, back to the future, basically, or to the present, I guess, since, since it's, it would be considered the present for Darian. Um, now, overall, I like the show. It, it was basically like a... Uh, a cop series, but it was set in the present. Uh, but you know, it was it had a, a bit of a sci-fi aspect to it. Uh, not really sci-fi heavy, but you know. So I enjoyed the show overall. It was mostly episodic from week to week. Darian hunts down a fugitive. There's some kind of story that goes on, and then he has to send the person. Uh, back to the future, usually. And there's an interesting method of communication. Whenever Darian needs help from the future, or when the criminals want to contact Dr. Sami in the future, they, uh, they posted an ad in the Washington Post. Uh, and then the people in the future basically scan through the archives to find the message. So if Darian needs something, posts an ad, uh, you know, police in 2193 scan through the archives like daily or whatever, they find the ad, they send them what he needs. Now, while I enjoyed the series overall, there were a few problems with it. One, Darian and everyone else are very lucky that Earth just happened to be in the exact same place in space uh, when they went back in time. Uh, I mean, th th there could be some variation like uh, Darian left from the, uh, the track tracks headquarters or whatever and he ended up in the basement of the Smithsonian, but it was still in Washington, D.C. They were incredibly lucky, unless like the Trax machine takes like spatial coordinates into consideration or something, I'm not sure. But this is a common problem with time travel series. Um, also, this, the series was cancelled, so it was never resolved, there's no, there's no ending basically. Jerry never does um, uh, find, and, uh, all the criminals or Dr. Zombie. So, yeah, it, it, it basically leaves you hanging. Um, let's see. Another problem, and this, this is really weird, it happened in only one episode that I recall, but the plot was that a fugitive... His backstory is that his girlfriend had been killed by a police officer. So he wants to murder the police officer's ancestor so that if... to basically prevent the police officer's birth so that his girlfriend will never get shot. And then the theory is that he goes back to 2193 and she's alive and waiting for him. Now, Darian yells to him, you didn't go back in time, you just went to another universe. And he says that even if the guy kills this ancestor, when he goes back to 2193, his girlfriend will still be dead. Now, they did mention, that they did have talk of the so-called parallel universe theory, as far back as the first episode, I think, but they never really addressed what they meant by that. Um... Now here's the problem though, and now that, that's the whole crux of Darian's argument in that one episode, in that one situation, but it doesn't hold up because if they didn't really go back in time and they just went to another universe, then, then how is Darian able to place ads in the Washington Post? and and have 
you know, his fellow police officers in 2193 read his ads. Uh, even in the first episode, uh, Sepp Dietrich went back in time and he placed an ad in the Washington Post that Dr. Zombie went to the Smithsonian and, you know, he requested a copy of the paper from the archives and he was able to read it. It doesn't hold up. But uh, anyway, the, the show, it, it was pretty good. I mean, if it came out on DVD, I wouldn't buy it. And if it came on TV again, I might watch it, might not. It was an okay show. Um, I remember once they had a 15 minute making of Time Track special that they aired on TV. And they used to do that on syndication for shows. And uh, Here's what I'm thinking. I, I'm thinking that they made these making of specials. I remember one for Roseanne too. I'm not sure if it was on ABC or in syndication, but I'm thinking it was syndication. But my theory is that if some kind of sporting event ran into overtime or whatever and they they didn't have a full half hour block until next show was scheduled to start, then instead of just airing you know, 15 minutes worth of commercials, they would air one of these uh, filler making of specials. Um, and it was pretty interesting from what I remember. Um, anyway, uh, that, that's all that I really have to say about it. If you want to check out Time Tracks, I'm sure you can find some episodes online. Uh, check it out if you're curious. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. It's 5.45 p.m. and that's it.